There's nothing like a good 90s moment to shove open those gates of nostalgia. Blue jeans, flannel shirts, MTV music videos, what's not to love? Well, looking back at a few classic movies, there's actually kind of a lot. So sit back, relax, and enjoy as we talk about some 90s movies that definitely wouldn't have gotten made today. American Pie launched the careers of some major actors of that generation. Allison Hannigan, Tara Reid, Jason Biggs. But there's a scene in it that well, to say the least, did not age very well. Like, Jason Biggs' character sets up a webcam in his room to secretly record a girl getting undressed. Luckily, it does end up backfiring for him in a hilarious way, but still. The scene's origin is extremely harmful. Jason talked to BuzzFeed about how, because of what that scene represents, it would not fly with today's audience. When he read the script at the time, though, the only thing he remembers being taken aback by was that there were cameras on the computers. And considering I didn't even have a computer in the 90s, yeah, that's pretty understandable, actually. Yeah. All right, time to ruin the Academy Award winner of 1994. It literally beat Pulp Fiction and Shawshank Redemption. And considering Tom Hanks won an Oscar for his performance of a character depicted as slow-witted, Forrest is right here would be taken a bit differently nowadays. His portrayal of such a character would, in today's age, be considered pretty offensive. Also, like his love interest Jenny, was written as someone who lives a life of free love, but was given addictions, AIDS, and demise. It seems like, at the time, everything that was ultimately wrong with this film went over the audience's heads, but today, well, not all of it would fly. Honestly, when I first watched this movie, it definitely gave me the ick. And I'm not even gonna get into the fact that the lead is played by Kevin Spacey. And regardless of Kevin Spacey or not, the movie is giving illegal. If you haven't seen it, it's the story about a man in a suburb who is going through a midlife crisis and takes up an unhealthy fascination with his teenage daughter's friend. He fantasizes about her in ways that are just gross. What's even worse is the fact that the movie doesn't depict it as gross at all. It's viewed as a way of him regaining his youth and happiness to the point where he's framed as some sort of hero. The Oscar goes to American Beauty. This movie won the Academy Award for Best Picture in 1999, but today? Yeah, there's no conceivable way this story would have hit the box office. At all. So this shouldn't come off as too surprising. The original film was made in 1962, adapted from a novel, but then was recreated in 1997. Why? I couldn't tell ya. I'm not gonna get too into the nitty gritty on this one, but this romance depicted between a much older man, who we are supposed to be rooting for, and an underage girl... You're crazy. Yeah, you get where I'm going. I definitely don't see a Lolita remake happening in the 21st century. So if you've seen this movie, you know where I'm going with this one. There's a particular scene in it that would definitely be considered a bit too horrific today. It's the dance scene. The one where Michael Madsen dances to the song Stuck in the Middle with You as he tortures a police officer tied to a chair. Even in the 90s, this scene had fans walking out of the theater. And the reason it's considerably problematic is because it's depicted as comedic instead of horrific. Classic Drew Barrymore. What's not to love? Mostly just the inappropriate student-teacher relationship. Big cringe vibes there. If you haven't seen the movie, Drew Barrymore's character Josie poses as a high school student to research the culture of the students. Eventually, Josie and her English teacher, Mr. Coulson, develop feelings for each other. Even though Josie's not actually underage, Mr. Coulson doesn't know that and continues making passes at her in ways that are extremely inappropriate. Regardless, he's literally her teacher. He shouldn't be saying things like, that When you're my age, guys will be lined up around the block for you. Like, bro, no. That whole Ferris wheel scene was just undeniably cringe. You have to say that because you're my teacher. <laughs> No, Josie, no, he shouldn't. Anyway, yeah, this script would not pass the vibe check in today's media. Shouldn't be talking about this stuff with you, I'm sorry. Okay, please do not come at me here. I still love Jim Carrey, but a lot of the jokes in this movie would never make the cut in today's media. I couldn't possibly get into all the horrible ways trans people have been depicted in the media since the very beginning of the film, but basically, that's what's happening here. In the film, the villain is revealed as transgender. God! Einhorn is a man! 
the literal reveal happens when Ace Ventura strips her down in front of the police. Yeah, problematic in itself. There was also the scene where after she kisses him, he pukes twice in the toilet, uses a whole tube of toothpaste to brush his teeth, burns all his freaking clothes, and cries in the shower. The scene in itself is lewd, distasteful, and also pokes fun at scenes in dramas where women shower after being essayed. A classic Adam Sandler appears. The Waterboy was a major hit with 90s audiences, but over time since, it has been criticized for its use of offensive language, most notably the R word. There were also a ton of people upset by the fact that the butt of the joke was a bullied person with a disability. And an article on Vice states this issue beautifully. These movies imply that we can make fun of minorities, people with disabilities, the gays, etc. All we want, so long as it comes with the increasingly offhand message that they're people too. So this one particularly hurt, not gonna lie. OG Sarah Michelle Gellar fans, where are you at? There are a lot of things wrong with this movie, but I guess I shouldn't be too surprised given the title. This movie has been called out for its portrayal of manipulation and victim shaming. Screwing the new headmaster's daughter before school starts. She'll be my greatest victory. The main character literally forces himself on Cecile played by Selma Blair, only to have it be dismissed by Catherine, who she thinks is her friend. The whole situation was completely brushed over, making Cecile feel like the one in the wrong. Yikes. This was discussed in Miss Magazine in 2019. Catherine uses the same technique of victim blaming questioning people often used when someone reveals they've been essayed to convince Cecile that she wasn't assaulted and that whatever happened to her was actually her own fault. Big, big yikes. Kevin Smith, you good, bro? This movie follows the story of a man who falls in love with a woman who he later learns is a lesbian. After its initial release, the film received quite a bit of praise, but since then, it's been called out for its harmful depiction of sexuality. I love you, and not, not in a friendly way. This was covered in BuzzFeed News back in 2017. Ultimately, the film assumes that a lesbian can go straight, even if just for a little while, as soon as the right guy comes along. Kevin, my guy, a melodramatic speech in the rain doesn't make someone not gay. So this thriller feature was making headlines when both Madonna and Kim Basinger dropped out of playing Helena. Such a relief! <laughs> following up with a major lawsuit being filed against Kim for backing out of her contract. From an outsider's perspective, it definitely seems like she did the right thing. Like, who is the target audience for this movie? During the trial, four jurors asked to be excused when they found out the NC-17 film was going to be shown in court. One of the jurors stated after being excused, I don't care what kind of movie stars they are. I don't wanna sit through that movie. The story of boxing Helena is about a man who is so obsessed with a woman, he amputates his limbs to keep her. So like, if that sounds undeniably problematic and cringe, you'd be right. Again, please don't come for me here. Aladdin has been called out a lot for its use of ethnic stereotypes. Like all the bad guys have overdone erasing Arabian features where Aladdin is more or less depicted physically as an American. There was also a song in the original cut called Arabian Nights. A lyric described Agrabah as a place where they cut your ear off if they don't like your face. Like Disney faced a ton of backlash for this and quickly changed it for the home release version of the movie. Who else is about to sift through their beloved 90s movie collection with fresh eyes? And honestly, sorry to do this to you. Even with all the controversial films on this list, there are still tons of gems with no inappropriate underage relationships, transphobia, homophobia, and offensive language that we can look back on. What are some of your favorite, non-offensive 90s movies? 